Okay, everybody. Uh, today we're going to be looking at periodic functions and their properties. Okay. Uh, first thing we need to define is what is a periodic function. So a function is periodic if it has a pattern of y values that repeat over regular intervals. Okay. One complete pattern is called a cycle. So if we look at our example below, uh, you can see two cycles are shown here. Um, it doesn't matter where you start. So here we start at the value y equals 2. We cycle through our graph. Eventually, we end up back at the point y equals 2. If we keep going, again, we end up back at y equals 2. Okay, So that would be one cycle. If we look at our other um, cycle that's shown, you can hear we start at the point y equals 0. Uh, we go up to y equals 1, down to y equals 2, back up, and then back to y equals 0. Okay. Even though we cross the x-axis at these points here, uh, we haven't completed a cycle because we haven't gone through the range of motion yet. Okay, So we have to complete the entire pattern before we've completed a cycle. Okay. And again, we could start the cycle at any point on this function. Okay, We could start it down here at y equals negative 1, and we follow it through, and then our cycle ends here. Okay. Uh, the horizontal length of one cycle is called the period of the function. Okay, so the difference between my starting point and my finishing point of my cycle on the x-axis is my period. So here you can see at the value y equals 2, x is equal to 1. I follow through my pattern. When I've completed my cycle, my x value is now 5. So the difference, 5 minus 1, is 4. So the period is going to be 4 units. Okay. If I were to look at this other cycle here again where we start at the value y equals 0, again I follow through the entire motion, and again I go from 10 to 14, a difference of again 4 units. Okay, so it doesn't matter where you are or what uh, cycle you look at, your period will always be the same in a periodic function. So in example 1 we want to determine whether each function is periodic, and if it is we want to state the period. So again, in a periodic function, we're looking for that repeated pattern of y values. So if I start at the very beginning of this graph, my y value is negative 2. Uh, if I cycle through, I end up at y equals negative 2. Okay? So I've completed one cycle. But if we continue through, I should end up back at y equals 2. Well, it's y equals 1, y equals 0, y equals 1. And I'm never going to end up back at y equals negative 2. So because I'm not repeating that pattern of y values, this is not a periodic function. Okay, so even though we have this pattern that is kind of being repeated, so I'm going down 1, up 2, down 1, up 2, because the y values are not repeated, it is not a periodic function. Okay, so not periodic. In our next example, um, again, you can pick anywhere you'd like on this graph to start. So I'm going to start here on the y-axis at the value y equals 4. So I follow through my graph, and I end up back at y equals 4. Okay? I should be able to repeat this pattern again and end up at y equals 4. So I follow through, and again I end up at y equals 4. So this function is in fact periodic because we are repeating the y-values. So um, we know that this is in fact periodic. Now what we're going to look at is what is the period of this function. So when I start at value x equals 0, I follow through my function, and I end up at a value of x equals 8. So the difference there is 8 units. If I were to continue my next cycle, again, I would end up with x equals 16. So 16 minus 8, again, is a difference of 8 units. Okay? So my period is 8. Okay? Again, it's important to remember a function is periodic if its y values are repeated at equal intervals of x values. Okay, so again, not only do our y values need to repeat, but that period should be the same for each cycle of the graph. As we continue, uh, we'll look at a couple more important definitions with uh, periodic functions. So the first is the amplitude. The amplitude of a function is defined as half the difference between the max value and the minimum value of the function. It's important to remember the amplitude should always yield you a positive value. Okay, If we look at this example down here, our maximum value is going to be 3. Okay, Our minimum value is going to be negative 1. So by finding the difference between those values, so 3 
minus negative 1. And again, we want half of this to give us the amplitude. Okay, 3 minus negative 1 is 4 over 2, giving me a value of 2. So my amplitude in this case is 2. The next important definition is the equation of the axis. The axis is the horizontal line that's halfway between the max value and the minimum value of a periodic function. Okay, so if I look at my function here, again, the axis is this red dashed line running through the center of the function. Okay, you can see that an equal value lies above and below the axes. Okay? We can also refer back to our amplitude. Our amplitude is 2, which means 2 units from the maximum should be my axes, and 2 units from the minimum should also be my axes. Okay? When we're stating the axes, we want to state it as the equation. So the equation is going to be y equals 1 in this example. Okay? Again, we have a horizontal line, so our equation is always going to be y equals, and then the y value through which the axis runs. In our next example, we want to determine the range, period, equation of the axis, and amplitude of the following periodic functions. So we're going to start with our first function uh, on the left, number a. Uh, and again, our first step is to identify the start and end of a complete cycle. Okay. So I'm going to choose this point here. Okay. Uh, so I start at y equals 4. I run horizontally for one unit, go down horizontal, and then back to my start. Okay? So this is my one defined cycle. Okay? I'm going to use this value to help me determine uh, these different values. Okay? So to start, my period, again, is the length of one cycle. So in this case, my period is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. I start at a value of x equals 2, and I run through, through to a value of x equals 7, so 7 minus 2 is 5 units. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to find the amplitude. To find the amplitude, again, we look at the maximum and the minimum value of our function, and then find the difference between them, and then divide by 2. So my maximum value is 4. My minimum value is negative 2. 4 minus negative 2, and then divided by 2. Okay, 4 minus negative 2 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So in this example, the amplitude is 3 units. Okay, next we're going to find the equation of the axes. So I know the axis is going to run through the middle of this function somewhere. Uh, I can use my amplitude to help me find what this is. So again, I know the amplitude tells me that my maximum and my minimum are going to be three units from that axis. Okay, so my axis is going to run through the center at the value of y equals 1. Okay, so 1 is three units from negative 2 and 3 units from 4. So my axis is at the equation y equals 1. Okay. The last thing I want to find for this um, example is my range. <clears throat> so my range, again, we're dealing with a line. Okay, so I'm going to have y is an element of the set of real numbers such that, and now I'll use my minimum and my maximum values to determine my uh, restrictions on the range. So my minimum value is negative 2, and y will have to be greater than or equal to this value, and y is less than or equal to my maximum, which in this case is 4. Okay, so my range is y is an element of the set of real numbers such that y has to be greater than or equal to negative 2, and less than or equal to 4. Okay. In my second example, <clears throat> again, I'm going to pick a point on the graph to start. It doesn't really matter what point you pick, so I'm going to pick this point here at uh, x equals 2, and I'm going to cycle through, and I'm going to complete one full cycle, which gets me here. Okay, I can use this to identify the period. So in this case, my period is going to equal 
uh, I started a value of x equals 2 and then at x equals 5, give me a difference of 3 units. Okay, my amplitude. Again, I look at my maximum value, so my maximum value is y equals 3. Minus my minimum value, which is negative 6. Over 2. We simplify our expression, and we end up with a value of 4.5. Okay, so in this case, the amplitude is 4.5 units. Next is the axes. So when I'm finding the axes, again, I know that it's going to be 4.5 units from my minimum and 4.5 units from my maximum. Okay, so 4.5 units from 3 gives me negative 1.5 and 4.5 from negative 6 gives me negative 1.5. So in this case, my axis is the equation y equals negative 1.5. Last step is my range. Again, I'm going to have y as an element to the set of real numbers such that, and then I use my minimum value, negative 6, y has to be greater than or equal to, and then y has to be less than or equal to my maximum value, which is 3. Okay, so my range is y is an element to the set of real numbers such that y is greater than or equal to negative 6 and less than or equal to 3. So in our last example, we're told that the automatic dishwasher in a school cafeteria runs constantly through lunch. The graph shows the amount of water used as a function of time. So in part A, we want to explain why the operation of a dishwasher is an example of a periodic function. Okay. So remember, a periodic function is a function where y values are repeated on set intervals of x. So if I look at my y values, we're talking about volume of water, my x values refer to time. Okay. So why the operation of a dishwasher would be periodic is because a dishwasher is going to use the same amount of water each time, and it's going to do it for the same length of time in a cycle, okay? So one cycle will use the same amount of water over the same time interval. B, what is the length of the period? What does one complete cycle mean in the context of the question? So to find my period, again, I need to look at one full cycle of the dishwasher. So I start here uh, at my starting point, uh, the origin of the graph. So in this case, I start at a value of y equals 0. So I go through, and I get back to y equals 0, but I haven't completed this full cycle yet. My full cycle ends up completing right here. Okay. So what is my period in this case? Well, I run from 0 to 14, so 14 units. If I were to repeat this pattern, again, I would end at 28, which is a set interval. Okay, so my period in this example is 14 minutes. Okay, for the second part of the question, what does one complete cycle mean in the context of the question? So one cycle So one cycle of the graph is going to be equivalent to one wash cycle of the dishwasher. Okay, so every time we cycle through this uh, function, we're washing a, an additional load of dishes. Okay, in the next part of the question, uh, part C, we're asked to determine the amplitude and the equation of the axes. So again, to find my amplitude, I have to look at the maximum and the minimum value, and then find half of that. Okay, so my amplitude is going to equal my maximum, which is 15, 
minus my minimum, which is 0 over 2. Okay, that's going to give me a value of 7.5. <clears throat> okay. um, the equation of the axes, again, the axes is going to lie halfway between my maximum and my minimum. Okay, because my minimum is 0, I know that my axis is going to be the same as my amplitude, so the axis is going to lie on the line y equals 7.5. Part D, we want to extend the graph for one more complete cycle. So I'm just going to look at the cycle and repeat pattern at the tail end. So in one x unit, I go up 15 um, values, something like that. And then again, we're horizontal for six units on the x-axis. I then go back down to zero and then back up to 15, horizontal for two units, and back down to zero, and then horizontal for two units. And there's my complete cycle. Okay. Part E, how much water is used if the dishwasher runs through eight complete cycles? So what we want to do is we want to look at how much water is used in one cycle, and then we can multiply that by eight. Okay, if I look at my cycle, we start at 0, we go up to 15, so I've used 15 liters. We go back down to 0, then I go back up again, so I've used 15 more. And then the water drains. Okay. It's important to note we're only counting the rise in this part, part of the graph. We're not really counting the uh, decline of the graph because the water isn't being used at this point. The water is being um, eliminated. Okay. So in one cycle, we go up 15, up another 15. So one cycle uses 30 liters. So eight cycles is going to be 30 times eight, which is going to equal 240 liters. Okay, so therefore, in eight cycles, 240 liters of water are used. 